everybody, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 42A. I'm Kate and this is Julie. Yeah. This week's tour portion covers Leviticus 16, 17, and 18. On other years that don't have the leap year, this would actually be a double portion. It would be shared. But this year, because we did have a second Adar, which makes it a 13-month year, we get mm -hmm. to just discuss it by itself. One portion this year. Yes, and it's chock-a-block full, of course. Um, to really get a good feel of going into this one, I want to back up just a little bit. If we remember in Leviticus 10, it's where, back it on up, <laughs> it's where we have Nahab and Abihu mm -hmm. who are struck dead, right? Because they're going to draw near. They brought and the strange fire. They brought the strange fire. So the idea is they did it the way they wanted to. I don't know the specifics. None of us do. But I can almost guarantee this, that while they had not quite gotten into the Holy of Holies, they were going to go to the Holy of Holies, all right? Mm -hmm. Meaning they were not just the holy place, but they were going to go all the way in to where the uh, to where the, the um, ark and the seat of mercy were, okay? After that, we see that the Lord says, listen, you need to make sure that Israel knows the difference between clean and unclean. Make sure they know the difference between holy and unholy. And then we have several chapters of that. Then on, in chapter 14, we see about the uh, cleansing of the leper, right? Mm -hmm. We learned about the birds and how um, one is set free and one is killed and through the blood and water. And it just really represents Yeshua, right? It represents what he did for us on the cross and the raising again with the bird that's set free. Then we had this break. We had Passover, Passover. which is where he comes and fulfills that, yes. all right? Well, the part of Passover that brings us in also allows us to draw near. Now, this week is about when you're going to draw near, okay? Here's when and how you do it. Now, he tells all the specifics of how it's done before he tells us when. And we find that it's in the uh, seventh month on the tenth day. So, that would be Tishri. Um, that's the same month that the Feast of Trumpets begins. So, it's ten days after that. And it's five days before Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, uh, Feast of Tabernacles happens. Now, obviously, that's not when this is happening. Okay. Here's an interesting point before we go any further. There were four sons that Aaron had, right? Mm -hmm. Two that died because they drew near the way they wanted to. Two that lived. Okay. Half that's and 50 and 50. We see that pattern. We have the ten virgins, five that draw near the way the Lord wants, five that do it on their own. They don't have the, they're not prepared, right? right? Then we have, I thought about Ruth. No. Oh, yes, the two. Yes, the two daughter-in-laws, one that leaves and then Ruth that goes, right? Yeah. How about how about Jacob and Esau? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jacob follows, Esau does it his own way. Okay, yeah. I mean, there are patterns over and over, but here's what's interesting. Both of them, Esau and Jacob, are both in the same family. Mm. Yeah. Ruth and the other one? Orpah. Orpah, Orpah. yeah. Orpah. Orpah. Opa. So, Orpa. Opa. they're both daughter-in-laws. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The virgins, they're both, they're all virgins. You see, they're all in the same category. The two servants. Oh, wait, of, how about um, the wide road and the narrow road? Yes, both roads. Both roads. Yes. And the two servants in uh, Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one who does, who waits and one who, who beat, you know, beats the others, basically. So, one who's faithful and one who does it his own way. He's mm -hmm. called wicked because... One who are evil, he does evil. And evil basically means not doing it the way which the Lord asks. So, wow, here's a thought. It's not the world and the believers and the unbelievers. It's that you all believe, but who's obedient and who's not? Yes. I mean, he'd rather us be hot or cold. Exactly. That's lukewarm is that one in the middle doing it their own way. Yeah, and on that note, we see in this week's Torah portion, chapter 17, where the Lord clearly says that if you don't live this certain way, the land is going to spew you out. It's going to vomit you out because yeah. it just can't stomach the evil. It just can't stomach the abomination. The mixing. Right. Can't stomach the mixing. Just like we see in the Laodicea, Laodicea church. Well, I mean, isn't that Messiah? Isn't that Yeshua saying, I will, I will spew, spew you out, out of my, my mouth. mouth? Yes, he does. Well, the land is his home. Yes. It's going to spew us out all right so that's pretty interesting when you kind of think about the bigger scale that that's today also i mean you have all this stuff going on in the land of israel today but eventually it will spew those who do not walk by the lord's ways 
out, okay? You know, remember, James says, hey, you do well if you believe. I mean, even the demons believe. Right, right. That's not a big deal. So when we walk around and throw away, um, throw away, throw around the name of God as if it has weight, fine. But what are you doing about it personally? Are you walking in it? Are you walking in it the way he says walk? Are you walking in it the way we want to make it look like? You know, the way right. we want it because that's what can do, well, that's, what is conducive to our lifestyle. Well, you know, it says faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. right? And we've taken that for granted, like faith is just a mindset. Right. But if you understand faith to mean hear and obey, mm -hmm. then you can say, oh, well, no wonder it comes by hearing because you hear the words of the Lord and then you obey them. Yes, then you it's do It's so them. simple. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I want to say one more thing. I love the pattern of they went through the physical Passover mm -hmm. and then you see... They said yes, yes, and then you see Nadab and Abihu get struck down because they did it their own way. Right. There's a lot, like you said, a lot of weight that comes when you say yes to being a child of God. Yeah. You know, and then, but for us, we get to learn from that, and we see that pattern. Then we do the Passover, go through it again, you know, with our Haggadah, and right. then we learn how to live holy. Yeah, like which you said. is exactly why Paul says, look, all these are rehearsals, which we know mm -hmm. that anyway. Right, right. So there's no mingling, okay? We just can't mingle. So no mixing. Right, no mixing. No taking with the world and with the Lord and putting it together and going, oh, we like this. Good compromise. Right, it no compromise. It doesn't exam It does not exhibit itself in the scripture. You know, we, and Paul says, be set apart. You know, right. he tells us to uh, be set apart. Peter says to be holy. And well, if let, we mix everything, source. if we mix everything, then, you know, there's nothing... Everything's common. Right. Well, let's go to the source, which will be next week's, and that's uh, Leviticus 19, which says, You be holy, for I am holy. Right. There's the source right there, and, you know, straight from his lips to my ears, right? Right, all exactly. Right. So, we see that we should not mingle, and we see that through all, we've seen that about how clean and unclean, right? Mm -hmm. So, this week, the idea is um, when to draw near, and the Lord's like, okay, now listen, Aaron, when you or whoever is high priest is going to draw near, here's what must happen. And then he gives us, first, the priest is going to bring his own sin offering, okay, mm -hmm. for he and his family. Then he's going to bring the, from the Israelites, from the children of Israel, the two goats. And there's, so let's look real quick at these two um, goats that are brought in. One goat, so they're, they're two goats, they're just the same, all right? And the high priest has to draw lots. One goat is said to go for the Lord, that's the sin offering, and the other goat is to say it goes to Azazel, okay? The goat of Azazel is not a goat that's sent out to a demon, okay? Mm -hmm. Hello? Remember, we just said well, there's no mixing. Azazel in Hebrew means to be completely removed, entirely gone. Never seen or heard again. How about this? Your sins are as far as the east, east is from, from the west. west. Does yeah. that make sense? That's what that is. Completely removed. And isn't that what Yeshua did for us? Yes. He completely removed our sin. Now, at Yom Kippur, at this time, is the only time that all sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're covered. They the sages actually say that it's not the high priest's actions at all that forgives the sin right mm -hmm. it's kind of a byproduct but only God can do that and we see that and we see that in Isaiah 1 Isaiah 45 Isaiah 44 there are many scriptures that show where he, um, the Lord is the one who does this all mm -hmm. right so never did um, Israel ever think oh well the high priest takes this away from us the high priest is the cog in the wheel okay because it's hmm, how's this it's the being obedient and going through and drawing near successfully. Mm -hmm. And in that process, you're forgiven. And, of course, we see this in Hebrews where we know that Yeshua removes all of our sins, even the transgressions. That means even those things that we did intentionally. And the day before Yom Kippur is a day in which we have what's called the Kol Nidre, which is where we confess all of our sins, okay? So, again, this is all a shadow of what Yeshua's going to do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Love it. So, let's look at those two goats. We have the one that's a sin offering. Okay, we understand that one. Then there's this other one that goes to Azazel, okay? Mm -hmm. so meaning it's retire, uh, entirely removed. removed. Well, if you think about it, the Lord did, Yeshua did both of these. He became our sin offering. Yes. But he was also that, that living goat that went on and carried our sins for us. Remember, Remove the him. sin offering had to be perfect. 
-hmm. Okay? Yes. So he's doing both. Now, it's also said, jo Josephus wrote about this, and he said that um, what they would do is they would take these two strings, and so they wouldn't get confused. They would tie the string of the sin offering, the red string around his neck, and then they would put um, it around the horn of the goat for Azel, the goat that's going to leave. So they wouldn't get confused which one wants the lots turned. And then they would take a part of the uh, thread, or that scarlet red yarn or whatever it was, and tie it on the door of the temple. And when the goat was sent out, whenever the man pushed it over, this red scarlet piece of yarn mm -hmm. would just change white. I mean, hello, Isaiah, right? Yes. You, though your sins are scarlet, right? They become like snow white. White as snow. White snow? Okay. Not snow, not snow white. white. We got dwarves involved. We're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when um, we have this, this beautiful symbolism that people could physically see. But they said after the time that Yeshua died, it never turned. Mm -hmm. It never turned again. It stayed red. Now, that was not to suggest that the temple was done away with its mm -hmm. role at all. But what it was to suggest, they say, is that you're looking in the wrong place for your forgiveness, yes. for your complete forgiveness, all right? Not for the drawing near part, but for your complete forgiveness. Messiah has already come. This foreshadowing has been already fulfilled. All and right? I guarantee a lot of people probably turn to Yeshua oh, because of that, absolutely. after seeing that. Absolutely, I would agree wholeheartedly. Plus, they see the difference. They because see why where he was going. It's what? always about. It's always the point. Now, while Yeshua is not in the order of Aaron, priestly line of Aaron, but he mm -hmm. is in the order of Melchizedek. Yes. And here's what's interesting: we're called to be priests, right? Well, we're not in the line of Aaron. We can't be priests in the line of Aaron. However, in the order of Melchizedek, there's no there's no uh, limitation. Okay. And that is the one that Yeshua fulfills. We know that from Hebrews. That's the mm -hmm. kingly line in which he's in, the priestly line, king and priest line. And that priest goes into the Holy of Holies because that's where he brings it. So the line of Aaron, that's not that, that allows him earthly access. But the line in or the priesthood of Melchizedek gives him the heavenly entrance. Now, we're then told to come boldly before the throne. Because we are into that priestly line. When we're called to be kings and priests, it's not on the earthly side like the line of Aaron. It's on the earthly side like Yeshua, where we boldly go before the heavenlies, into the heavenlies in order to give our supplication, our obedience, our drawing near. Right. All right? And that, even though there's not a temple here today, that we can still do. Yes. That we can Amen. still draw near. But, again, we must do it the way he asked us to, with the right. clean hands, a clean heart, right? And a clean hand and heart, according to what we've learned, even in Leviticus, here's clean and unclean. These are the things you need to do. How you eat, right? How you sexually behave, which is in chapter 18, all right? Who you can and can't have sex with, basically, all right? Um... And then also idolatry, which is going to come up next week. Now, these are three things that are really important. This week's Torah portion is considered the heart of the Torah. Now, we've talked about there's the middle of the Torah where you do the count of the words. That's where it says to diligently seek. This one is the heart of the Torah as in um, looking by verses and, you know, it's like in the center. Okay. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. If you open in the complete middle, this is the heart of Torah. Of Torah. And they understand the this books. too, of the five books. They also understand that this is the heart of Torah telling us exactly how to be holy and unholy. Mm -hmm. Okay? How to be holy in order to walk in his ways. In order to draw near and not be struck dead. All right? Right. So, let's think about Acts 15. Mm -hmm. The main point that they have right there was basically the heart of Torah. Mm -hmm. Watch how you eat. Mm-hmm. Your watch sex, how you sexually behave, <laughs> and watch your idolatry. These three things you can control. These three things you'll hear Moses regularly, and you'll get the rest. All right, that's exactly what we see in this week's Torah portion. That's really cool. Yeah. So we've got the three that line up with those three because again, they weren't just making up rules. Right. They weren't. They're like, no, this is Torah. What do they have to learn in the Torah? So really, those are the only rules, the only laws you need to keep. And think about this, how the enemy perverted that, because in the pagan temples, those were the three things yes. that they were performing. They were sacrificing to idols, yes. so the idol worship. They were 
eating those that food sacrifice to yes, idols abomination and yeah. they were having sexual intercourse with the priests and priestesses in the pagan temples right yeah so it is like twofold you know it's like just have them do the heart of torah and then they'll learn torah but also it'll keep them out of those pagan temples yeah and you know you just said something that made me made me think so they had prostitutes in the temple mm -hmm. and they were called holy right just like the priest or the priest for the Lord are you see holy again means set apart. set apart fine you can be holy on the bad end you can be holy on the good end that's why he has to make a an extra effort to say be holy as I am holy yes I love it exactly <laughs> not because, as they are holy right don't or just how be you want to be holy yeah don't just be set apart don't just say well I'm I'm gonna be set apart for God and I'm gonna do it like this you know what that's fine Hay, wood, and stubble. That's right. Oh, I love it. Hay, wood, and stubble. It doesn't do anything in the end. I love and that's it. why it makes sense that Yeshua says, many will come to me in that day and say, but we did all of these things in your name. Yeah, yeah. And he'll say, I'm sorry, I didn't I know, know you, you because we refuse to do it his way. Well, because then he says, I don't know you, you lawless ones. Yes. You toreless ones. That's I right. Mean, he tells you why. It's not like, I wonder why that happened. I remember sitting in a Bible study and we were all like, oh, I wonder who these people are. But that was before I learned Torah and understood. Yeah, and nobody reads underneath it. Right. It's like, well, I'm sorry. We're just well, talking about it just depends on what version you're reading. Because some of them don't say. They yeah. say the wicked or, yeah, that's or whatever. True. Which so we you said earlier. make up your own definition of wicked. The one that's evil, when you go back and even look at it in the Greek, it says the one who's doing wrong. The one right. who's not doing Torahless. What, yeah, the one, the one who's, who's not lawless. doing what the said. Yeah. And think about it. The Antichrist is said to be the lawless one. Right. Without Torah. Exactly. So exactly. he's not going to be this devil. Yeah, he's not going to have red horns, pitchfork, <laughs> and, a, and a tail he likes to play with. That is not going to be what he looks like. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. just going to be he's anti Torah. Look like an angel of light. That's right. I mean, isn't that going to draw more people than the one that looks like a devil? Yeah, I, just, I just think he deceived the first two human beings by saying, did God really say? Mm-hmm. Isn't that the same deception the same, today? Yes, the same. Did God really say the we had great to do delusion. that forever? And it's the same great delusion. Did he same really delusion. say? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Leviticus 18.3 is where we see the Lord's basically saying that when you go into the land, you need to make sure you walk accordingly. It says, where I bring you and do not walk in their laws, meaning the people of Canaanite. Do my right rulings and guard my laws. Walk in them. I am the Lord your God. And you shall guard my laws and my right rulings, which a man does and lives by them. I am the Lord. What? And where have we heard that before? Galatians. Galatians. Galatians 3.12. I'm going to start in 11. And that no one is declared right by Torah before the Lord is clear, for the righteous shall live by belief. And the Torah is not of belief, but the man who does them shall live by them. See, the whole idea here is, so what if you say you believe in them? Again, the demons believe. It's not just by belief. It's you act on something because you believe it. You know, we walk according to Yeshua, according to the Torah, because we believe in it. That's you right. sit on a chair because you believe it's going to hold you up. If you don't think that chair is going to hold you up, you don't sit on it. All right. So our actions say everything about what we believe. Everything. And that's what that is. If you believe in it, then you have life by it. And we see in this week's Torah portion where he's saying, you have life in my word. You live by this manual, you'll have life. Well, speaking of Torah being life, I just wanted to say, it gives a whole new meaning to what Yeshua said. I came so that that they can have life and have it more abundantly. abundantly. We yes. think that means things. We think it means a car, a house, or that's what we've been taught. But no, when you start living Torah, that's enough. Yes. It really da is. Yes. <laughs> da da <-ainu. laughs> Yes, absolutely. It is enough. It would have been enough. Yes. And um, we are blessed by that. And it's, it is a real mind blower. It is. In this day and age. But until you live it, until you do it, you're not going to understand. Right. But in this day and age, to go back and look at that and go, why didn't we have this before? Ah. And I can tell you why. Because it wasn't time. That's right. It wasn't time. And now it is. In order for is. that scripture to be fulfilled that says they will take hold and say, we've inherited lies from yes. our fathers. Yes, that's that's right. exactly what's happening now. Right. And I love it because even 
the rabbis in Israel are saying, well, according to scripture, the, the Christians are going to get a hold of the Torah right. and start walking in the ways of Torah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yes, that's exactly what's happening. And if we have eyes to see and ears to hear. And that will fulfill the fact, Romans 11, that says that the Gentiles coming in are the ones that make in. Israel jealous. That's right. They make the ones who... who don't understand Messiah, jealous to come and now see Messiah. Well, look what it's doing. They're putting articles out in Israel saying right. these things. So at least it's making them go, huh, well, I better get my act together. Right, exactly. If they're getting their act together and they don't even have to. Right. And again, so that's because of Yeshua bringing in the northern kingdom, that's allowing right. us, all of us, to come back in. That's right. How awesome. What a great time to live. Yes. And it's fantastic to watch this stuff unfold. Absolutely. Knowing that we have a Redeemer and we have we have a promise. And we get to watch it unfold. And we have an inheritance. That's right. And it's a process that we get to be involved in. That's right. Actively involved in. So let's put on our boots, roll up our sleeves, and get active. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this week's tour portion. We hope you've enjoyed it. I know we sure have. Yes. We'll see you on the flip side with the Brit Hadashah and Julie. Shalom.